This tiny late 19th century dream house is tucked into one of the most exclusive neighborhoods in America, Boston's Beacon Hill. Interior designer Lisa Davis said it had humble beginnings. It was built for the staff of a big house on Mount Vernon Street. And I have read that it could have been built for a coachman because the coachman was quite well paid. It's cozy and charming now, but 25 years ago, it was hate at first sight. We went and looked at it, and I was furious. It was so small. I've never lived, even as a student, in such a small, confined space. Lisa made some important changes. She had the walls striate in a rich apricot color. I went away for the weekend and came back, and she had done it. The beams are painted, too. A faux painter used several layers of color to get this effect. He pulled a little steel comb that size and he scratched it so it looked like old wood and it gave it character and that's how it came about. Lisa was born in Denmark but lived in England before coming to America. She picked her Danish antiques for a very practical reason. Everything I have has drawers because it's very short of cupboards here. She says this young lady's chest of drawers is made of rare elm. All things open on the key in Denmark. You don't have many handles if you look around at my furniture. She stores everything from scarves to off-season clothes in here. She uses the silver-plated tea set when she entertains. In this, which is really a desk, I keep my towels and sheets. Nobody expects you to live like that, but I do. <laughs> she displays some of her favorite pieces on top of this 1800 elm chest from southern Denmark. Lisa says if there were a fire, this jar is what she'd save. This is from my great-grandfather's apothecary business, and they had all the medicine was in these. The small bonbon dish was a part of a set of more than a thousand pieces the crowned prince of Denmark had made for Catherine the Great in the late 18th century. It's called Flora Danica, so Danish, and Latin name and on the back, the reverse side, it tells you the name of the plant in Latin. And the three lines means that it's uh, Royal Danish Porcelain Company. The hand-painted designs were based on botanical prints like this one Lisa has. When you look at old prints, you will see that the antique ones are much more dirty. These other prints aren't as old, so the colors are clearer. Lisa says they're re-strikes. This English bookcase was hard to get in here, but she couldn't live without it. Books, very important to me. They warm up a room. These dogs remind her of the ones she used to breed and show in England. I had the live ones at home. They are adorable, little King Charles Cavaliers. She also loves this English George, the second chair which dates back to 1750. We stripped it back to the old frame which you should always do with really good antique furniture. You see all the wormholes and the repairs, and then the upholster build it up. Lisa chose a gorgeous blue Italian flame stitch fabric for the chair. The claw and ball feet are beautiful, but watch out. When I go to quickly to the door around this way, I always stub my toe on it. <laughs> the blue and white Dutch tiles around the fireplace were there when she moved in. Blue and white is a very pretty color. Scandinavians adore blue and white. The tiles inspired her to collect blue and white accessories. Every time I did an antique show, I'd buy a little something. An antique adds some badly needed storage to Lisa's tiny kitchen. It's a bit of a Mickey Mouse kitchen uh, because there are no shelves or anything. So I found a little dresser in a shop and put that in and that holds dry goods and cups and bits and pieces. If you're looking for the refrigerator, she's got two small units hidden beneath these curtains. I found the wallpaper one day I was in the design center, and I, I love flowers. And I thought it was just right for being in a cottage. The wallpaper is based on 18th century Curtis prints, like the kind Lisa sold in the antique shop she used to have. There's more great wallpaper in Lisa's cozy bedroom. She fell in love with it when she used it as a show house years ago. I love waking up slowly <laughs> and looking in my room, and I'm very happy every morning. This Swedish serving table was unpainted when Lisa bought it. Her close friend John Anderson transformed it for her. Put real gold leaf on it, 
and then maybe like porphyra on top. It only has two legs, so you have to place it very carefully up against the wall. So even though she didn't like it at first, Lisa has grown to love her New England dream house. So for me to come home tired after whatever I've been doing during the day, come into a nice home, relax with a newspaper and a glass of wine, I think is lovely. Fire in the grate in the winter, that's a home. <laughs>